Hello friends, welcome to my today's webinar. This is your host Prashant Kumar. So let's begin with our today's most awaited webinar and try to figure out the ETL concepts. And uh, here we go. So before we start uh, learning about ETL and its concepts, let's see a few other terms which would be playing a very important role in this webinar or they are considered to be very important when whenever we talk about ETL. So data warehousing and business intelligence. These are the two things which are often interlinked, interrelated and talked about whenever we talk about ETL. And then we'll see in detail what exactly is ETL, the ETL process and how the testing is being performed and the other concepts related to ETL. Data warehousing is a database that is designed for query and analysis rather than transaction processing. It is constructed by integrating the data from multiple heterogeneous sources. And when I say heterogeneous, not homogeneous, but heterogeneous, different kind of sources. Data warehousing, data warehousing enables the company or organization to consolidate data from several sources and separate analysis, separate the analysis workload from transaction workload. So whenever we have data coming from different kind of sources, uh, it is divided into two different, or it is segregated into two different parts, whereas in one part, the analysis is being performed and the other part, transaction workload is performed. And then we have data is turned out into high quality information to meet all enterprise reporting requirements for all level of users. So a raw data is data which has information, which has everything in it. But then once it is processed and uh, a selective information or selective set of data, which is required by different kind of users for their different kind of purposes, reporting can be one of it. Then that data is transformed into information. Now let's talk about the BI. BI is the process of collecting raw data or business data and turning it into information that is useful and more meaningful yes so nowadays people they talk about business intelligence it is nothing but the process of uh, formulating a process of uh, turning raw data into useful information and it becomes more meaningful it becomes more relevant to its users the raw data is the record of daily transactions of organizations such as interaction with the customer, administration of finance, management of employees, and so on. Or it can be any user related data. This data is used for reporting, analysis, data mining, data quality, and data interpretation, predictive analysis. So in my separate, um, if you are a regular viewer to my channel, you might be knowing that I already have published a few webinar and presentations on artificial intelligence, deep learning, and data mining concepts. So if you're interested, please feel free to visit those videos and it will give you a nice insight about those concepts. And you can anytime ask or connect to me via LinkedIn, Twitter, or my channel, put in your comments and I can answer your question regarding any of these concepts. So ETL is based upon data warehousing and BI intelligence. And ETL is a process, extraction, transformation, and loading of data. It is conducted with two separate concepts, which is data warehousing and business intelligence. How it is being done, I'll show you in my upcoming slides. Before that, we also need to know the difference between OLAP and OLTP, online analytical processing, and online transaction processing. So OLAP and OLTP are two very important procedures, two very important methodologies which are being used and uh, which are greatly involved in any kind of database uh, processing or data warehousing or business intelligence or maybe in ETL process. All of them, they some or the other way are interrelated to OLAP and OLTP. What exactly is the difference? Uh, if you see OLTP, it is designed to support business transaction processing. So the name itself is very relevant and you can figure out any kind of transaction which is being processed. It is conducted via OLTP. And in OLTP, the OLTP is designed to support decision-making process. 
So anything related to the transaction part is conducted via OLTP and anything uh, which is related to the decision making process that is done via OLAP. Analytical part is taken care in OLAP and transactional part is taken care in OLTP. OLTP is application oriented, whereas OLAP is subject oriented. It has uh, subject oriented data. The current data is present under OLTP and historical data. It contains not only the current, but also the historical data under OLAP. And depending on that, it makes the decision. It makes the analysis. Detailed data is present under OLTP and summary of data is present under OLAP. OLTP has the volat volatile data. It is highly volatile and keeps on changing after every transaction, whereas OLAP is having a non-volatile data. Normalization data is conduct uh, normalization uh, normalized data is present under OLTP and uh, denormalized data is present under OLAP designed for running the business and OLTP is designed for running the business. For example, any, you know, you go ahead and you buy something. I'll give you a good example to know what is OLTP and OLAP. For example, if you go to your online website and you go ahead and you buy, let's say you go to Amazon.com or any um, sites such as Flipkart or somewhere, and you go ahead and buy some mobile phone or any of the things which is you think, okay, it is cheap and you're having a sale and at this point of time you want to buy some mobile phone or any kind of electronic goods, you go ahead and buy it. And maybe you can use any kind of discount code, coupons or something while you purchase. A transaction is performed and you receive the item, right? That comes under OLTP. And then, let's say once the whole year, whatever transactions have been conducted or during the whole process, whatever uh, different kind of transactions have been carried out by different kind of users, what was bought, what was sold by the company, how much was the discount, all this information, it is then analyzed and depending upon the kind of uh, result which, is, which the end user is exactly looking or seeking for, the whole of this data is analyzed and a separate set of information is taken in order to make some decision. This information is analyzed and reported to the end users. For example, during the Christmas or let's say during New Year or maybe during any festive season, people, they buy more of electronic goods with uses of different kind of discounts. Uh, so companies, they get to know uh, it makes it easier for them to understand the fact that purchasing power of people, it increases or the tendency of purchasing electronic goods during festivals or, or during the New Year or Christmas increases a lot. So they try to push as many as offers at that point of time with respect to the electronic goods. So this is the kind of example wherein you can understand OLTP and OLAP. OLTP supports ear modeling, whereas OLAP supports dimension modeling. Uh, users can access data, clerical users can access the OLTP data, whereas the knowledge users can access the OLAP data. I already said anybody who's just looking into the transaction system, they might be known as clerical users, whereas the knowledge users, the power users, who exactly want to analyze the data and want to make some decision for their company, they use this OLAP. And DB sizes are different. Oh, you can have a DB size 100 MB to GB, 100 GB, whereas you can have DB sizes ranging from 100 GB to 100 terabyte. OLAP has few indexes, whereas, uh, but of course, OLAP will have a lot many more indexes. And it has having very, uh, OLTP has a lot many joins because it is running at the real time. It is dealing with the transaction systems, whereas OLAP has fewer joins. So this is the basic difference between OLTP and OLAP. I know many of you would be knowing this concept earlier, but in order to make our upcoming slides a little more understandable and easier for a wide range of audience, I decided to come up with this kind of concepts. So let's go ahead and move on to our next slide, which is the main one, what is ETL? So I guess this is the reason you're watching this presentation or webinar. This is the reason everybody is over here. And we are trying to figure out different kind of concepts and trying to find out the answers to ETL process and ETL methodology. So here we go. Right, so you can see a diagram on your screen, which I have shared with you. This is what is ETL model exactly. 
So you at the extreme left, you have different kind of operational systems such as ERP, CRM, SQL, flag sheet, split, flag files, spreadsheets, just it can be a number of them. And then next to the left side, you have ETL, which is extraction, transformation, and loading. So I already said most of you would be aware of the concept ETL, which stands for the stack, transform, and loading. I'll talk about it in detail. Let's see this diagram. So when you say ETL, ETL has data validation part, data cleaning part, data transforming part, data aggregating part, and data loading part. Everything then moves to the data warehouse. And from data warehouse, it is again moving forward to OLEP analysis, data mining, data virtualization, data report, data dashboards, and alert system. So let's see how exactly the system works. We have different kind of operational systems wherein on day-to-day -day basis, different kind of transactions that take place. And depending upon the transactions, we have a set of user input, a set of transactional input, a set of uh, business inputs coming in from different kind of sources, which I have mentioned over here. It can be any ERP system, CRM system. It can be SQL database, or it can be even flash flying or spreadsheet. People might be storing their information, transactional information in the spreadsheet and SQL files. So it can be anything. All of this. All of this then is taken by ETL model or ETL process. And through ETL process, we extract the data, which is of our relevancy. Everything which is present over there, which is coming from the input system, may or may not be relevant for the end users, right? So we need to extract the right kind of data. That data is validated. And after validation, it is being cleaned. Then it is transformed from one form to other form. We'll see different kind of uh, processes which are involved in data transformation, cleaning, and data aggregation. And then this data is loaded into data warehousing. So in data warehouse, this process data or the data which is extracted, transformed, is then loaded. From there, from this data warehouses, we have different kind of OLAP systems or data mining system, data virtualization systems, data reporting system, data dashboards or alerts, all, all these systems, they make use of data warehouse in order to process a end user specific data so as to convert into useful information. So now we have from raw data collected from different operational system, going through the ETL process, getting loaded into data warehouse, and from data warehouse, the whole of this data is, is then processed and converted into useful information for our end users, which then can be used under OLAP analysis for data mining, virtualization, reports, dashboards, and different kind of alerts. OK? Let's see all of this. Let's see the, the ETL process in detail. And to show that, we have a real world example of ETL. So you might be having a thought, OK, I know the model, how exactly the ETL model, it works. But I'm, I'm not sure, or you might not be sure how exactly this ETL model comes into picture in a real-time example. right? In the real-world scenario, how does it ETL comes into picture? Where does it fit? So let's see. We have different kind of apps, app one, app two, app three. All of them, they are having different kind of they might be user-based systems or transaction systems, and people, they keep on uh, using it, and they keep on posting different kind of transactions, keep on carrying out different kind of transactions, depending on those transactions. We have OLTP database, which has normalized and row-oriented row data inside it. So we have different kind of data as per the transaction performed by the users using these apps. All this information is then kept up or it is stored in OLTP database. Now, in OLTP database, from there, whole of this information of the raw data is then moving into ETL system. I call it as a daily ETL system because on daily basis, the information from OLTP is moved out to the ETL system where it is validated, extracted, transformed, and loaded into data warehouse. So we have a OLAP data, data warehouse where data coming from the OLAP database is then transformed, 
it is extracted the kind of data as we mentioned in our previous slide the kind of data what is over there it is extracted it is cleansed and then it is transformed into a right kind of information or right kind of uh, data which is to be used by the end users and then it is loaded into warehouse and from this warehouse using any of the reporting tools or the, any of the business intelligence tools or different kind of OLAP uh, services, tools, uh, data mining techniques. This data is then processed into information, useful information which is needed by the end users. We have it, uh, the data which is stored in OLAP warehouse can be normalized or unnormalized. It, it is mostly in column oriented data and then using different kind of techniques, which I mentioned, uh, uh, this data is converted into useful information, mostly a kind of report, which is then used by the management or the power users or the knowledge users so as to make analysis and kind of decisions related to their uh, product, related to their system related to the users so they can use this data collected from one end and going towards the other end as a useful information for making kind of decision based upon their analysis. Now let's see the kind of ETL process what we talked about in previous two slides how exactly it happens how is the workflow moving first of all we have extraction process extraction process is nothing but extracting data from the source system we have seen we there might be so many oltp systems which carry a different kind of transactions and depending upon the transactions data is extracted from the source system there are various source systems which i already mentioned it can be any of the apps it can be csv it can be excel it can be flat files it can be different kind of servers from where you're just getting in information uh, getting in data, raw data, user related data, or raw data, or transaction based data. So that is extracted. It is then transformed into a standard dimensional schema. So, what happens? You apply, the system applies functions to confirm data, confirm data to a standard dimensional schema, and then it is loaded into a warehouse which has data marks load the data into data marks for the consumption so data marks are the smaller sections or smaller fragments which are inside the, the data warehouse which is used for storing useful information which is extracted transformed from the previous oltp systems and then it is stored in data marks of data warehouses so it is loaded over there and from data data marks of data warehouses this information using different kind of uh, bi tools uh, or maybe data virtualization, data visualization, data mining techniques, or different kind of uh, data related techniques, data processing techniques, data, data is used from uh, the used from the data warehouse for different kind of online processing. And there's also one more process involved, which is known as load the data from the data mart into queue for browsing. So all these OLAP systems, they take data from the process. And this process is what is known as cubing. Cubing is nothing but a three-dimensional array of data. So everything which is extracted, transformed, and loaded is then converted into cubes, data cubes. And these data cubes are then utilized by OLAP systems for processing. Now. We know how exactly the ETL system works and what are the three main uh, concepts front, which is uh, OLTP system, and which is OLAP, and in between we have ETL working in place along with data warehouse and data marts. So we have this end to end flow in front of us, and with this flow comes into picture the ETL testing process. So ETL testing is performed to ensure the data that has been loaded from source to the destination after the business transformation is accurate. It also involves the verification of data at various middle stages used between source and destination. So ETL testing is nothing but the process of verification of data through different stages from end to end, that is from source to a destination, plus to check whether the data or the information which is provided to the end is accurate or not. 
So to confirm this kind of checks is known as ETL testing. The different kind of steps or the uh, different kind of uh, phases which are involved in ETL testing process are business requirement understanding, test planning and estimation, designing the test cases and preparing the test data, test execution with bug report and closure, summary reports and result analysis and test closure. It is something very much similar to a typical STLC model what you do and same way we do it over here because it cannot be conducted in an agile fashion. It has to be into very much specifically a STLC model because nothing here runs in a go. On, on, the, on the fly, things cannot happen for especially, especially this kind of data testing. Over here, you have to work in a very structured manner because everything needs to be pre-planned. Plus, on runtime, you cannot test. You have to do it in advance and you have to come up, you have to understand the requirement. You have to, in the, in the first place itself, it should be very much clear what your end users are looking and you have to understand the business requirement. Then you have to go and make the plan. Depending upon the plan, you have to provide the estimation and then you have to design different kind of test cases and test scenarios. I'll let you know more detail about the different kind of ETL test scenarios and the test cases and how to prepare test data. And then several kind of executions are being done for different different kind of ETL tests. And depending on that, you have bugs or defects which are figured out. What are the most common kind of defects which are seen during ETL testing? This also I'll let you know in my upcoming presentation. And then you prepare a summary or report. And depending on that, again, changes are being done, system is modified and everything is rectified. And this process is done in iterative manner till the time everything is closed, all bugs are resolved and you have nothing, no flaw is left in the system from source to destination. And finally you go ahead and when you're 100% sure the kind of information which is provided to the end users is accurate and there's no flaw at different middle, um, middle stages of the system, then you go ahead and provide a test closure and sign off. This is what is done as a part of ETL testing process. Now let's see in detail the ETL testing and different kind of phases and activities involved as a part of ETL testing. Identify the data sources, which is uh, part of requirement analysis. First of all, as a part of requirement analysis, you have to understand what are the data sources which should be coming into picture from where the information be gathered, from where the data would be gathered. And then you go ahead and get involved in data acquisition, implementing the business logic and dimension mod dimensional modeling, plus build and populate the analytical queue. Again, queue is the same thing, three-dimensional array, which has all set of information in it, which is being used for uh, data analysis. So uh, the requirement analysis part is to understand the data sources and also to understand who is the end user which, who is going to use this information which is derived out of this data. And then you have design and coding, which has all these three different phases we talked about. And at last you have the built reports, which is used by QA and deploymenting. As soon as you have the deployment, QA, go, uh, QA takes it up. And since end-to-end -end, uh, deployment has been conducted, you have all of this information ready. And as per uh, requirement analysis, as per the design and coding, it is expected to work in a certain fashion. And it is expected to provide certain kind of information to its end user. You have all these details with you. You can go ahead and uh, conduct the quality analysis or software testing just to ensure that end to end uh, different kind of stages, they have the correct kind of data and the data or the information which is provided to the end user is accurate and perfect and which can be used for their, uh, whatever purpose they're using it. The different kind of testing uh, stages or different kind of testing uh, process which are conducted at different stages are validating the data required and the data sources, data profiling, data quality and performance acceptance criteria, data transformation rules. So uh, as a part of testing, you have to verify and validate the data which is required and the different kind of data sources, whether they are reliable and the kind of data they are providing is relevant. And then you have data profiling, you profile the data depending upon the data which is to be segregated and how it is to be given as an input to ETL system. Then you have data quality and performance assistance criteria. Any system who is working as an input and providing different kind of data, which is to be used in ETL process. First of all, we have to see the 
property of data and the performance of the system from where we are receiving data, whether it is working fine. Let's say we have an app, but the app is giving us a broken set of data, there is no point. Or we are getting data from a flat file, but it, the flat file itself is corrupt or something which is not of much relevant uh, when it is used for retail processing. The whole performance of the acceptance criteria is broken, right? So that has to be verified. And then you have the data transformation rule. The data from the sources which is provided, it can be like 100% of data which is coming from the uh, input sources is given into the ETL system, is provided into the ETL system. And if at all there is any kind of transfer transformation rule that has to be uh, performed on this data before getting it into input or during the process of ETL, that has to be verified. Then you have reviewing the data dictionary, that is metadata about data, that is data dictionary, metadata, and then validating the sources to target mapping, validating the ETL and data warehouse uh, architecture, validation of data model, indexing and partitioning, etc. So now once you have this data input data coming from the system, you have to review the data dictionary. You have to validate the sources and the target mapping. Okay, this is the source and this is the target. How do, how are they mapped? This you have to know in advance. And then validation of the ETL and the data warehouse architecture, the ETL, the way it is working and performing different kind of uh, functionalities, what we have talked about previously, broadly classified into extraction, transformation, and loading, plus data warehouse and data, uh, data warehouse, data marts where the data is going to be stored, the architecture of ETL and data warehouse has to be verified and validated. Validation of data model, dimensional modeling, normalized approach, whatever approach is being used, or dimensional, whatever modeling is being used in whole of this process that also need to be verified. You have to check the indexing and partitioning as well. You have to check the different kind of storage mechanism, how exactly it is taking place. All this information has to be verified. Then you have archival or purge strategy, error logging, exception handling, and recovery scenarios, plus you have parallel execution and precedence, ETL, pull logic, full implementation, and archive delta pull. So now when you have this validation being done for the input sources, you know about the ETL data warehouse architecture and a different kind of data about data, all these definitions in front of you, you have to know about the purge strategy. Everything which is present over there cannot be used forever, right? There should be archiving a purge strategy which is being used. So you have to figure out and validate that as one. If at all any error or exception is coming place, then how that exception is being handled if at all there is any kind of recovery scenarios which are being used in case of error coming into picture, so you have to verify it as well. This is all negative scenarios which need to be verified or validated. Then you have parallel execution and precedence whenever you have data coming into picture and there is a risk condition, how exactly the parallel execution is taking place or if at all two set of data is coming at the same time, how exactly the precedence is taking place. Also, you have to verify the ETL pull logic of full incremental, for example, uh, full or incremental logic. For example, ETL is always pulling up data from the sources, data sources, right? So, what is the mechanism, or what is the uh, what is the pull logic through which it is uh, taking full set of data from the sources? All of these things they need to be validated and verified. And then you have test data preparation, ETL testing, end-to-end -end scenarios. OLP and cube testing, report testing, drill down and drill through. So now when you have all this information in place, you have to prepare in your dummy test data or test data preparation from the existing data which is present over there, which you can use for your testing. Uh, you, you also need to figure out end-to-end -end test scenarios. I'll talk more about the end-to-end -end test scenarios in my upcoming slides, so or maybe in my next presentation, so you can have uh, more details about ETL testing in, in them. Plus OLAP and cube testing, cube, as I said, OLAP and cube, I already defined a multidimensional data which is having all information. So OLAP, OLAP testing, how the analytics processing, how the analysis processing, analytics processing is being conducted, that is taken into picture. Plus cube testing and information is also, uh, every set of information regarding the cube and OLAP online processing, online uh, analytical processing, that also is, uh, to be checked or verified. And finally, the kind of report which is generated as a part of OLAP processing, that report should be checked 
for the correctness and the validity. It should be validated against the correctness and the kind of information it has been done and this through approaches are being used. So in this way, friends, we get to know different kind of stages of testing and what are the different kind of high level scenarios, high level processes, which are conducted as a part of validation and verification for end to end ETL testing. With this, we move on to our next slide. And I understand many of you, even me, when I used to work uh, on, on this presentation, or maybe I, when I talk to uh, some other uh, database testers or ETL testers, often it happens, there's a very thin line between ETL and DB testing, and people often they get confused when they're reading for the, when they're trying to learn ETL testing, they, they get often confused that it is same like they were DB testing, what is the difference? So no friends, there's a there's a much significant difference between ETL and DB testing. Let's figure out what are the set of differences between these two. And then it will help you to understand the ETL and DB testing in much better way so that in future you can truly answer this question. Many times people, they go into interview and this is asked to them, what is the difference between ETL and DB testing aren't the same. How are they different? Let's figure out. So here is the answer to all those questions. And this is the reason I always say, always, always try to learn new technologies, always try to emphasize on different kind of slides and learning modules so that you get to know not only the technology, but also you tend to know different kind of terms and concepts, which will help you not only in your day-to-day -day office work or in your testing task, but also when you go for any kind of interview, this helps you a lot. If in case you need any help regarding your interview, may it be technical or HR, feel free to take my services. I have given details about my uh, services, which I provide over there at my website and my LinkedIn. Feel free to get in touch. You can drop me a message and I'll give you details about my services, which I provide you for uh, your interview preparation and your job selection. So moving on to ETL versus DB testing, both ETL testing and database testing involve data validation, but they are not same. I repeat, they are not same. ETL testing is normally performed on data in a data warehouse system, whereas database testing is commonly performed on transactional system where the data comes from different applications into transactional database. So let's see in detail what are the differences? In ETL testing, we verify whether data is moved as expected. Whereas in DB testing, the primary goal is to check if the data is following the rule or standard data model. Okay. Then in ETL testing, we verify whether counts in the source and the targets are matching. It verifies whether the data transform is as per the expectation. Whereas in DB testing, it is verified that there are no often records of foreign primary key relations maintained. So there shouldn't be any often records and for all the records, there should be foreign or primary key relationship to be maintained. Okay. Whereas uh, same, is not in the, uh, same is not the case in case of ETL testing. In ETL testing, we verify that the foreign or primary key relation are preserved during ETL process. And in DB testing, we, we verify that there is no redundant table or database that is optimally normalized. So we verify there shouldn't be any redundant table and database is optimally normalized. Whereas when we check ETL testing, it verifies the duplication of loaded data. And in DB testing, data if data is missing, verify if data is missing in the column where required. So DB testing, you can see, is a smaller subset wherein we verify primary goal uh, to verify the different kind of rules, standards, and models. And then we shouldn't have any often record. And then we have no redundant tables, databases optimally normalized, and there shouldn't be any missing data in columns. So these are the main goals of DB testing, whereas in ETL testing, we, the main concern is how data is moving from source to destination. And then the count in source and target is matching. Transformation is taking place as it should, expected in expected manner. And verify the foreign key relationship is, foreign key and primary key relationship is maintained. And duplication 
uh, of loaded data that is verified over here in ETL testing. So these are the main differences. And I'm pretty sure anybody who has done a DB testing, given the kind of training or with a proper set of information and tools, they can very, anybody who has done DB testing can very well perform ETL testing. All you need to do different kind of scenarios. You have to understand different kind of bugs and that's it. You can go ahead and test it. It's just not something uh, which is a rocket science. It's very easy to test and you can go ahead and do it. All you need is right kind of information and tools. Okay, friends. With this, we move on to the next slide which is talking about ETL defects, different kind of defects that could be seen in ETL testing. So while you're performing ETL testing, what would be the different kind of uh, defects or bugs that could be observed? So let's see, we, we have different kind of bugs which I mentioned over here. Few of them are like source bugs. Source bug, it's, it's very much evident as soon as you are getting data from your input sources, as I mentioned, OLTP systems, applications, flat files, SQL servers, from where you're getting your input data. You can have bugs from the source itself. So all those kind of bugs are known as source bugs. You have input or output bug, the kind of input which is going into the ETL and the kind of output which is going into the data warehouse. You can have different kind of bugs at these two entrances, either at the entrance or at the exit. They are known as input and output bug. You can have calculation bug. If at all you have any kind of business logic which is involved in the uh, extraction or loading or transformation in this three process, these are the main three process, extraction, transformation, and loading, which is part of ETL uh, process. And they require kind of business logic. They require kind of uh, mathematical logic or any kind of conditions. And there are a lot many conditions which need to be met to perform such kind of things, to perform such kind of process. So if at all there is any kind of uh, mathematical logic which is hampering the expected output or which is not letting you get the expected output, it can be because of the calculation bug. User interface bug. We have certain user interfaces, and you can have bug because of that, the whole data will be corrupt, and uh, that will be considered over here. You have BBA related bug and ECP related. I'll talk more about BBA and ECP related bug in my upcoming slides when we talk about the test strategy. So it will make more clear, and you will understand the concept of BBA and ECP related bug. Hardware bugs. We have um, ETL is not only related to the software and the data; it is also related to the hardware on which data is being stored, data marts, and all the systems which are using different kind of softwares. So there could be hardware bugs as well. And then you have a race condition, as I say, parallel execution precedence. If at all there's anything wrong, then there could be a race condition, which is not being checked. And because of that, you can have certain kind of deadlocks or any kind of issue in the system. They are considered under race condition bugs. You have load condition bugs when you're loading the data to data marks and data warehouses. So at that point of time, if at all any kind of uh, issues are observed, they are known as load condition bugs. And version control bugs, the data is versioned into different kind of version systems. And there might be kind of version control bug because of which deduplication or data duplication or data extraction or loading of the data can be impacted. They are known as version control bugs. These are the different kind of bugs which can occur as a part of ETL process taking place. So when it, when we are performing or when we are practicing ETL at that point of time, right away from the source till destination, at any point of time, we may have certain kind of bugs. These are a few of them. I'll talk in more detail about this in my upcoming slides So or in the next presentation. So that will be very much helpful for you to understand these concepts in detail. And with this, I'd like to stop this presentation because, and this webinar, because ETL itself is not a very simple concept. It's a huge concept. And I guess already we have taken a lot of time to understand this concept till now. And I don't want to make this uh, presentation or webinar very long one because then people, they start losing their concentration. So I, I don't think that's a good idea to do so. And with this, I come to an end of this presentation. But uh, in the coming days, maybe next week, I'll come up with one more webinar presentation, which will talk, talk about types of ETL testing, ETL testing scenarios, responsibilities of a ETL testers, 
ETL testing, uh, ETL automation and performance test approach. How can you perform performance test and automation test on ETL? And best practices for ETL testing. Best practices for ETL testing. These are the things which I'll be covering in my next webinar. So friends, with my candid press, please go ahead, subscribe to my channel. If you do so, you'll get and um, click on the bell icon so that you can get notification of all those webinars which I keep on publishing time to time. Meanwhile, you can also access all those previous webinars which I have talked about in past with respect to different kind of testing technologies, methodologies, and some uh, tips and tricks regarding your job search and mentoring services. So feel free to use all these resources. They are freely available. With this, we come to the end of our presentation. And this is me, Prashant Kumar, your host for today. I'm a QA evangelist and software testing enthusiast. Most of you who know me, they already know I'm a computer engineering graduate, PG in uh, software uh, management from Howard University and ICM Sydney. 13 years of uh, Java development and business analyst test consultancy experience. Currently working as a quality head for one of the major IT firms, startups over here in Munich. I have worked in past for major IT firms, investment bank, and startups across US, UK, Switzerland, Germany, and India. Feel free to get in touch with me for any QA related query, solution, and mentoring opportunity. I do provide private mentoring and consulting services. So feel free to get in touch. And you can follow me at Twitter or subscribe to my channel or my blog. So in this way, we can be in touch. And you can also get in touch with me via LinkedIn. Feel free to do so. Thank you, friends. Have a nice weekend. Enjoy. Bye-bye. See you next time.